Hello, college football fans, and welcome to another edition of the College Football Pick'em. This is a special recap show with John Sturdivant, who was at the game live today at the Liberty Bowl. John Tigers walked away with a 41-29 victory. Uh, I know we talked at halftime, and we talked about Brady White, uh, just to bring up him uh, first off today. Uh, I thought second half he really came into his own uh, and really got in, a, got in a groove. Finished 17-36 for 313 yards, uh, four touchdowns and interception. First off, I want to say congratulations to Coach Ryan Silverfield and the coaching staff and, and the players to, you know, to find a way to win at home in front of your fans. You know, that's always a good to get ready for a tough game. Next week in Ohio against the Cincinnati Bearcats, who play later on tonight at 8 o'clock yeah. against SMU. And um, first of all, I just want to give them a lot of credit. But like we talked about at halftime, Wes, it was 15 to 10 Temple at half. Yeah. And we basically couldn't tackle. We tackled below the feet at times, mm -hmm. it seemed like. We had dumb penalties. We couldn't get the offensive going. But again, I think some of it was due to. Um, Sean Dykes blocking before helping out, like, you know, when they used Joey a little bit last year right. as a tight end block. And to me personally, that was basically our biggest weapon, or one of our biggest weapons, actually not on the field, technically just blocking for the, helping the lineman out. Yeah, so, I completely uh, agree. Um, I think first half, uh, we were hitting them with a little more of the RPO stuff. Uh, but we were throwing the ball a little bit more in the first half compared to, I'd say, second half. I think we ran the ball. I would say we definitely ran the ball more than we threw it. Um, first half, man, we're really all game. Uh, we, we we were shooting ourselves in the foot, like like you said, with some bad, bad penalties. Um, a lot of pre-snap penalties, uh, which really the Tigers haven't been accustomed of doing recently that I can remember anyway. Uh, we've been pretty disciplined on the on the penal, penal, penalized front. Um, what is something that uh, just just looking forward, John? Of course, next week Memphis has got a tough game up at my favorite Nippert Stadium. Uh, take on number nine, uh, currently ranked number nine. LA, or I'm sorry, Cincinnati Bearcats. Uh, of course, they play tonight in a tough game against SMU. Uh, of course, as a Memphis fan, we know we pretty well control our own destiny. This year in the uh, AAC, there is no more divisions, so the top two teams play for that championship. How do you? I mean, I mean what do you think uh, the keys are going forward? Uh, going to get? Well, some I do want to bring up some information on that Temple game. First of all, you know that we're going to talk about. Uh, you know, we held Russo the three hundred and sixty or three hundred and eighty-seven passing. Right. Forty-one to sixty-three. Threw the ball sixty-three times. Yeah. For the ball game. Yeah. And we held their leading rusher Davis to twenty rushes for one thirteen. So average about six yards, but he earned those six yards late in the second half as well. Yeah, he did. Um, I tell you what, Jones, their receiving core, Jones and Blue. Blue's they're not, the real deal, man. If they're coming back for another year because you know that extra year of eligibility. Right. Their NFL stock will definitely go up. Oh yeah, no doubt. Uh, they were combined. Blue kids, yeah, they were com nasty. right? Yeah, Blue had 13 receptions for 115 mm -hmm. for three touchdowns, mm -hmm. uh, and Jones had 12 for 118 with zero touchdowns. Wow. Talk about the Tigers real quick. You know, Brady, like you said, 17 and 36, 313, four touchdowns and one interception. Yeah. Uh, Rodriguez, give kudos to Coach Anthony Jones again. He had another 100-yard rusher and mm -hmm. Rodriguez Clark, 22 carries for 106. Colin Watkins had a good game, nine carries, 45 yards. Yeah. And uh, Timothy Taylor got that first carry of the year for 15 yards, I believe. Yeah, it was. And then, uh, you know, the, the good thing is everybody else, like Weaver, got two carries for four. Asia Martin, one carry for five. Mm -hmm. But, hey, what can you say about Calvin Austin? Six receptions, 184, one touchdown. Yeah. Washington again, five for 77 for two touchdowns. But Calvin Austin, talk about Calvin Austin, you know, that one that catch that he had over his shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's another SEC top 10, my book. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, man, I tell you, speaking of just 
Hodge Washington to me, man, he's such a he's such a weapon. And uh, I also realize that we also have him returning punts as well. Am I correct on that, John? That's Calvin Austin. Is yeah, Calvin Austin returning punts. Right. Okay. I got you. I got you. Um, Todd Washington to me, man, is a is a little weapon. He's very uh, very shifty. Reminds me a lot of Pollard, um, and just how we use Pollard in the offense. Uh, let me ask you this, John: Do you like Kevin John's play calling style? Good question. <laughs> uh, what is this? How many games in the belt? Hang on a second. Uh, we are three and one. We're four games in the season. So we're definitely four games in. You know, it's going. He's a new offense coordinator. You know, he's right. well, technically not a new offense coordinator because he was the offense coordinator for the bowl game. I think. John, you look like your your face is black right now on the screen. It's all that sunburn, knock. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, no, uh, it's called, I mean, I got, you know, it's like Mike McIntyre. You got to give the coaching staff plenty of time, you know, to adjust. This is new players, you know, rotating in and out. You got defense players going in and out. You got a lot of young players stepping up right now. Yeah, you do. And it just takes time with as a young team as we are other than Brady White, and our offensive line and some different yeah. positions at receiver. We're a young football team on offense. Yeah, very. Man, I tell you what, uh, I like his style, man, because yeah. he's he's really kind of aggressive. Uh, I think. I mean, there's times I that mean, real quick, I wish we could do more like trick plays in a way too, though. Yeah, and that's that's one thing. I mean, that we actually ran it three times today. I believe it's a little pitch out. And then you'll have that wide receiver coming back in that reverse motion. We never did hand it off, but we ran that play a few times. And I think that I think a lot of that trick play stuff is just, you know, situational and scheme wise as far as if, if, if they've got the right defensive look for it. Um, but I like Kevin Johns, man. Uh, I think he's uh, pretty aggressive with his play calling. Uh, I, I don't think a lot really has changed between him and Norvell. But one thing that I do like, over him, over Mike Norvell, is the fact that um, he's not scared to go for it on fourth down. John, we are six for six in the last two weeks on fourth down. I love that. I I just not so it, fast. Shows, it shows a confidence in your football team to line up and get the first down when you got to have it. I won't correct you. We're seven to seven. Five of five last week. Oh, sorry, my bad. That's right, that's right. We were five and five last week. I was, I was thinking four and four. Uh, What's the uh, key stat that you were concerned about in the game? Uh, man, key stat. Hang on one second. Let me scroll over to that page. I mean, I'm looking at the 30 to the 24 first downs. But that's the only thing that I'm really see I'm concerned about. Um, uh, Penalties? I, I think – I mean, you know, I mean, we only had seven penalties. But uh, for 71 yards, uh, that, at the end of the day, that's going to hurt you, obviously. Um, fumbles, uh, you got you know, turnovers. Holding on to the ball, ball possession, that's something that we've got to work on. Um, that really could have came back and bit us in the backside this week. Uh, and I think that we uh, – I don't want to say we got lucky, John, but we had the ball get back, bounce back in our, in our way. Because those turnovers today was really, really, really hurt us. I mean, like you said, like during text message, when Brady threw that interception, he could easily ran that ball and wasted another yeah. ten yards back penalty. Yeah. And I'm like, God, Brady, nothing. You know, Brady's done everything we have done for us in in the past years and this year right. around so far. Right. But I'm like, Brady, don't do this to us this year, this game. Come on now, Brady. You know, you know better than that. Yeah, I, think Brady just, I, mean, I think Brady just panicked and said, okay, I'm just going to have, you know, a pause moment and say, oh, crap, what am I doing right now? I think it was one of them things, like you said, there was there was actually a holding penalty on that play. Um, that play, I mean, he could just ran, got out of bounds, taking the little 10-yard penalty and kept on going down the field. And I think it was another one of those things where when he let that ball go, he floated it. But I think when he let it go, he realized, oh, I didn't put enough on that. Uh, that one kind of hung up on me, and it was just – it was doomed from the very beginning. 
And then the wide uh, receiver fell on top of that too. So. Right, exactly. Uh, I think if you look at this Memphis football team, once again, we got to go back to the defense, John. Uh, I think our defense is playing great football. I I understand we got 600 yards put on us today. I I, I get that, or 500. That's 500, total yeah. yards, which is a lot. But in today's college football, I think that's about kind of common. I mean, would you say it's common? I mean, that's that's a lot of yards, but the offenses of today are a lot more powerful. Especially when a lot of defenses are blitzing the linebackers these days mm-hmm. and not actually putting the linebackers and safeties in the middle of the field, you know, yeah. toward this anymore. Exactly. But, uh, you know, mm-hmm. we're talking about like another key stat. We're about to, I mean, I love Tipple's play calls on offense. Mm-hmm. You know, through pretty much the whole game in the first half, because the time of possession, they the time of possession was thirty three minutes to twenty six minutes for the ball game. Yeah. But I am surprised when Tipple's first possession of the second half, they went for that deep ball. I know they want to catch Memphis off guard. Right. But everything's been working out for you so well with the short passes. Why change? Why you, yeah. Why are you throwing? Yeah. Why change it up now and throw the ball downfield? when it's in double coverage at times because you saw Owens throw that, get that interception for Memphis. Mm-hmm. He right. had a heck of a game on defense as well. Talk about our defense. He yeah. had two interceptions. O'Brien, forced a, O'Brien Goodson forced a fumble and recovered a fumble. So you know darn well our defense with leaders like O'Brien and Owens, who's only a sophomore who came from Innsworth High School. Yeah. You know, our defense is going to come. It's just that these stupid tackling, they're not tackling well enough. They're yeah, letting I people go by them at times. It's just they they're getting adjusted to Mike McIntyre's defense. It's going to take time when you have one of your guys, TJ Carter, not playing right now. Bottom yeah. line. Yeah, it's 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 going to take time. And I think, you know, this has also been the craziest freaking offseason probably. I Not probably, but I know ever. Uh, I mean, you know, so you're you're missing out on those spring practices that you would normally get in, those reps that you would normally get in. And then now with all the testing and all that going on, as a coaching staff, you really got to take it day by day, hour by hour in a way, because you don't know who, who you're going to have to, you know, play chess with and move around. But uh, I think McIntyre is doing a good job. As we talked about last week, people were talking about fire McIntyre, and I, I think those people are crazy. Uh, I think if you look at Mike McIntyre, he's got that head coach pedigree. He's got a a pretty good tra- – I mean, I think a decent track record as a head coach. Um, yeah, I'll pull out his record while you're up. If I'm not mistaken, he was coaching in Florida, or am I crazy? No, I'm thinking of McIlwain. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of McIlwain. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, McIntyre was at Colorado, am I correct? Yeah, he was at Colorado and then San Jose State also. Right. I mean, and, and the guy is a good defensive coordinator, man. Uh, you, nobody can take that from him. The guy's a good defensive coordinator. And he's got our defense flying around the football field, at least from what, saw, what I've seen on TV. Is that is that what you've seen in person? I mean, everybody's saying, well, he didn't do nothing at Ole Miss. He was at Ole Miss for one year, <laughs> I believe. And look, here and look at Ole Miss's defense. They're terrible this year, too. Yeah. But, yeah, I think, like you said, everybody's throwing around the ball pretty well Mm -hmm. or on defense and offense. But when we're rotating guys, sometimes in and out, playing young guys on defense, basically you're – T.J. Carter is one of your leaders on defense, like I just told you. Right, yeah, yeah. When he's not playing with due to the hamstring right right now, it's just hard, you know, like John Broussard. I don't think he's – I know he's used to playing corner at times. But the question is, is he used to playing on that side of the corner? I don't think he is, man. I think John Broussard is kind of – I think he's. it's taken him some adjustment to get used to playing on that side of the field. And and, and it's crazy because people don't think about it, but there it is a difference playing on one side of the field versus playing on the other. And you're talking about know, Mike McIntyre. I don't know that yeah. he's 100% healthy. Nobody really knows. Yeah. I mean, look at, looking at Mike McIntyre's coaching background. In 1990, he was a Georgia graduate assistant. And then in 92, he was the defense coordinator at Davidson. Okay. Defense coordinator at UT Martin from 93 to 96. Mm-hmm. Timbo's DC from 97 to 98. 
Ole Miss receiver coach, 99 to 2000. Defensive back coach, 2001 to 2002. He's been in the NFL ranks with the Cowboys, Jets. And then he was also at Duke as a defense coordinator. And then he was a head coach from 2010 to 2012 at San Jose State. He turned that defense around yeah, in the whack. Yeah, he did. And then Colorado from 2013 to 2018. And then that one year at Ole Miss last year as a defense coordinator. Okay. So, he, so really, I mean, he's, he's moving around, but he really hadn't moved around all that much. Uh, but he's got the NFL background. Update, That's the bottom uh, line. 21-20 Penn State just took the lead on Indiana. Three minutes to go in that football game. Could it come down to a miss extra point? Or I, don't no. think, I don't think that Penn State's had to lead the whole game until now. I'm pretty sure wow. they have, actually. And then Texas is up uh, 27 to 16 currently on Baylor. Yeah, it's about a minute to go in that one. Five seconds left to go in that game. So Texas I mean, is going get off the snide and get a win. I mean, the key for – talk about next week's game now real yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, Cincinnati, 11 a.m. our time, 12 o'clock mm-hmm. their time on ESPN2. Right. Now Memphis but, is returning to – go ahead. I'm, I, I was going to say I'm really glad it's on an actual ESPN channel. Yeah, I heard this. It's I heard the broadcast was horrible. This I heard the broadcast team was horrible today. It's to yeah, honest. that wasn't great, man. That wasn't great. But uh, you know, it's on ESPN two. We're traveling one hour ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Central, like Temple, did yesterday they played. They traveled one hour back. Yeah. We're going one hour forward. Mm-hmm. So, to me personally, it's eleven a.m. on ESPN two. Is a good way to publicize our conference as a whole going mm-hmm. into that game. Mm-hmm. Um, I am, like you talked about in the preseason with me, that offense of Cincinnati is still good. Yeah. Uh, they're number nine in the nation for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, they pretty much, like Forrest Goodman and Matt Dillon talked about, you know, in their post-game interview. I don't know if you listened to any of it or not. But, uh, well, it was, no, it wasn't Forrest really, Goodman. I mean, not Forrest. I'm sorry, you, Forrest. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Matt Dillon. I got you. Matt D- <laughs> hey, I'm just so used to listening to Forrest, man. For real. Just like what? <laughs> Look, there's no way it was Forrest. <laughs> Woo! Far. I'm sorry. Okay. Stop. Yeah. I got you. Matt, <laughs> Matt Dillon and Jeff Brightwell. There we go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, they talked about how they're so loaded, still on offense. Our defense yeah. is going to have to put pressure on their quarterback pretty much the whole game to have a chance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And these linebackers and corners are going to have to step up and get some turnovers at different positions as well. Yeah. Fans got to remember also Tim Hart. Tim Hart also optioned out. People got to remember that. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Con- I'm not worried about our offense. I guess we'll find out today when they play SMU. SMU plays Cincinnati. Right. How not, yeah. good since yeah? How good Cincinnati's defense is? I know SMU's missing their leading receiver. Yes, but, and also yeah. the running back as well. Um, I mean, if, if you it, like, take for instance Cincinnati right now. Uh, quarterback Ritter is uh, forty-seven of seventy-eight, five hundred ninety-seven yards, six touchdowns, four interceptions. Uh, Oaks, their running back who we saw last year, forty-two carries, one hundred forty-five yards, and four touchdowns. Uh, receiving wise, they got Jackson. He's got eight catches for 132 yards. Uh, I think if you look at Cincinnati, uh, they're they're averaging about 36 points a game, uh, but their defense is really, really impressive, man. They're only giving up about 12 points a game, John. That's not a lot of points. That takes that's that that's going to take something big. Uh, passing yards, they're only allowing uh, around 170 a game, and they're only uh, allowing about 130 yards rushing a game. But also, if you go back and look at their schedule. Yeah, Austin P is one of them. Austin P game one. They beat Army game two. They played uh, a South Florida team that is not good. Uh, then they had the uh, postponement against Tulsa. And this week they've got uh, SMU. But they've got SMU. They, cut, they turn around and play Memphis. Then they play Houston. Then they play East Carolina. Then they got Central Florida, Temple, and Tulsa to end the season. I mean, a, a lot of people are just putting the crown on um, Cincinnati as a team that can possibly sneak into a playoff position 
if they run the table, I I don't see it. I mean, looking at that schedule, that's not that's that's not an easy schedule. You know, looking at their schedule also, if you you know, at UCF as we know, it's always a tough place to play. At Latter they have forty five thousand yeah. or ten thousand. Yeah. Um, they still got at Tulsa the last game of the year. I was a makeup game as well. Mm-hmm. And Tulsa's defense, you know, Tulsa's not a bad football pretty, team. It, Tulsa's not a bad. I mean, I think their coach has finally got the talent on both sides of the ball where they can get like six to seven wins this year. And I'm really glad to see that they um, stuck it out with him, that they didn't just make a move and let him go uh, in uh, the, la- the last couple of years. I was kind of concerned last year, to be honest with you. I was very concerned last year that they were going to let him go, and they didn't. Um, and I honestly am glad that they didn't. I'm glad to see – I can't. I can't I'm trying to think of what his name is. I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. It's just when they iced his own kicker last year. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, all you UT fans out there, y'all got beat 48-17. Um, and prayers uh, to the Alabama receiver that got yeah. hurt. Um, yeah, uh, Waddle. Waddle. Waddle is out for the season. Uh, not exactly sure what his injury is, but I know he is. On the opening kickoff of the game, how sad! Yep. Opening kickoff of the game it was very, very sad. Um, that's why I'm. That, that's why I'm not going to be surprised that more players throughout the year now I'll are definitely going to option out. Yeah, I completely agree. Completely agree. Um, I mean, from, you know, we talk about GT we talk fans about, out there. Uh, I just want to say um, firing your defensive coordinator, your assistant defensive coordinator, was not the issue. Your issue is Jerry Garantano, as John and I have talked about, so we're blue in the face. The guy is a mediocre, at best, quarterback, and your defense is not that elite. Um, and the past, what, three, four teams that y'all played have proven that. Uh, Tennessee is overrated. Um, I I kind of started drinking the Kool Aid a little bit earlier this year, but I'm I, I threw that whole jug away because Tennessee is not a bit of a, of a team in in my opinion. What about you, John? I mean, talk about Tulsa real quick. Tulsa's head coach is Philip Montgomery. Phil Phil Montgomery. That's it. That's it. That's it. But uh, talk, yeah, talk about t- Tennessee's schedule. You know, you got Georgia and Alabama, mm-hmm. pretty much back to back. And to me personally, like we talked about, offensive line definitely still has to improve for Tennessee to, you know, get their offense going. Yeah. But like you said, their defensive line, coach getting let go after four games, yeah. and it's his first year under Jeremy Pruitt. Come on, Jeremy. Yeah. Give this guy a chance. Exactly. I'm straight up. I'm pissed off about it. I'm not going to lie. I got yeah. high school players that play for Tennessee that I covered. Yeah. Jeremy, it's four games in the year. It's a COVID-19 year. Give this guy a chance. See what he can do. I know Tennessee fans might disagree, but give this guy a chance and see what he can do to prove you wrong. Exactly. And like, it, I'm still some, you know, real quick. So it's the same thing with Arkansas State right now. Mm-hmm. They fired their defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. And after Georgia, okay, Georgia State scores points at times. Yeah. So Georgia State beat Tennessee last year. Georgia State pretty much has the same team coming back this year. And Arkansas State fires their defense coordinator and defense analyst coach for what? Do the players not get along with him or something? Or uh, I don't know, man. Maybe I, it's the same thing with Tennessee. I really don't know. I have to ask my friend Rob, who's a diehard Tennessee fan, see what he can tell me. But Yeah, hey, Rob, Rob, if you watch this video um, that we'll be putting on Facebook, let us know because I'm very curious because uh, I'm not trying to cuss on the show, but it kind of seems like it's kind of a little bit of a dumpster fire or a shit show in Knoxville a little bit. Um, but, John, just to get into today's games, give you a few score updates from around the country. I want to talk about that upset State. yesterday first. Uh, go, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. How about that Jacksonville State Gamecocks going to the Miami and beating Butch Davis? 19 to 10 yesterday. That's a big win for that program. Um, I'm I'm really kind of enjoyed watching that little team, man. Jacksonville State, uh, they gave LSU a game a few years back, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that I was a fan when they beat Ole Miss. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I, I, I was going to say they also <laughs> beat Ole Miss as well. Um, Jacksonville State's kind of a uh, – they, they kind of remind me of a Troy 
from years back. If that if that that you know rings a bell, yeah. I know it does with you. Um, that team's getting a little bit better every year, man. Very similar to a uh, Coastal Carolina uh, type well, team. Coastal- yeah, Jackson. Yeah, Jacksonville State's in Ohio Valley, right. you know, one double A, but still, they've always been them and Austin P have been battling it out the last two years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, real quick, some stats from that game from Jacksonville State and Florida International. I don't know if you're looking at it or not, but how many first downs did Florida International have? Do you think? Uh, I'm gonna guess and say twelve. Six. Six the whole game. Jacksonville State had twenty six. Florida International had six. They got six first downs the whole game. Third down conversions was, like we talked about, two of 11 for Florida International. That's not good. That's, that's, that's not a good recipe. 72 rushing yards for Florida International, 84 passing yards, 156 <laughs> total. Meanwhile, Jacksonville State had 285 rushing and 159 passing. That's impressive. So, and the time of possession, here we go, 42 <laughs> minutes for Jacksonville State. How long? Florida International, 42 minutes and 16 seconds. Wow. To Butch Davis's offense, 17 minutes and 44 seconds. In Miami, in the front of 1,000 fans. That was at Florida International, right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's good year for okay, good year for the conference USA. Yeah, yeah, they're looking good. Um, right now, you've got Oklahoma State leading. Iowa State, uh, just under a minute to go left in that game by 10, 24-14. Uh, we've got Penn State up 28-20 to 20, uh, with a minute and a half to go in that game against Indiana. Uh, we got a little overtime action, John, a little overtime. Uh, down in t- Middle Tennessee and Rice are getting ready to head to overtime. Rice playing their first game of the year. Uh, Houston with a nice win today over Navy. Purdue. With a nice win today over I- I- Iowa, which is kind of surprising. I, you, you know, know actually, actually missing hey, Rondell Moore out, as well. Yeah, give Purdue a lot of credit. They didn't have their head coach for that game. They yeah. used, uh they didn't have. Their, I don't think they had their starting quarterback for that game either. No, starting quarterback, but, uh, and of course, Rondell Moore was out as well. But yeah, without you know, at Purdue, they've always they always have. I don't know care how many fans this year, but they always have a good win at home every year. And yeah. This is their first year. Yeah, they do. They their do. first one, I mean. Uh, big barn burner game going on right now in the SEC. Missouri 20, Kentucky 10. Uh, that's about a minute. Uh, probably, what did you think about them benching game. their quarterback? Who's that? Wilson benching their quarterback for Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. They, they did bench him. Uh, you got the LSU South Carolina game getting ready to get cranked up now. Uh, Bama, we talked about them. Uh, no, the Big Ten is back today, John. Ohio State uh, had a little scare at the beginning of the game, came back and knocked off Nebraska 52-17 today. Uh, the Fighting Fuentes out in Blacksburg, um, Wake Forest got them today, 23-16. Uh, Florida Atlantic with a big loss today to the We Are Marshall Thundering Herd, uh, lost to them 20-9. to Coastal Carolina, my boys, the Chanticleers, knocked off Georgia Southern today, 28-14. to 14. Uh, Auburn, let's talk about this one, John. Auburn with another robbery of a win that makes two this year. As we know, Arkansas got screwed by the SEC officiating crew because they suck. And now <laughs> – Looky there, lightning strikes again for old Gus. The, the, the Gus bus is going to have like five flats and blow the engine before the end of the season, I'm telling you. They're going to fire his ass. Uh, Gus Malzahn gets away with another one, John. The SEC officiating just sucks this year. I don't want to hear anybody tell me that the SEC is the best college football conference anymore because their officiating crew is piss poor. It was it was a kickoff. I, I don't know if you if you've seen it. Frank. I haven't seen it yet. We'll okay, it. well it's it's very simple to explain. It's a kickoff. The guy goes to field it. It touches his hand. The ball changes posi- changes direction completely. Rolls into the end zone. Ole Miss picks the ball up. It's a touchdown. The game's up. I mean, you know what I mean. 
No, 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 it didn't touch him. It didn't touch him. No. Are we going to review it? Hell no, we're not going to review it. We're not going to look at it. We're not going to take, well, maybe, maybe, might have, no, no. Don't even worry about it, guys. Here, here you go, Auburn. Here's the ball. And then they drive the field and win the game. It's absolutely, it was an atrocious call. If I was Ole Miss, I, I would just be livid. Uh, I, I'm sure Lane Kiffin's going to post. You know, Lane Kiffin's great about posting stuff on Twitter about referees. Uh, he did it last year at Florida uh, Atlantic. It was beautiful. The whole three blind mice referee on the field. Uh, I really want to see it again, again tonight from him. I'd be pissed off if I was an Ole Miss fan. I am not. Um, but Auburn is not good, John. They're not good. Uh, offensively, they're not good. They scored 35 points today, and I know it, everybody's going to say, well, they scored 35 points. They're still not good, man. I, I just – I don't see Gus Malzahn making it through this through this entire year. What about you? Yeah, let me look at their stats from today. Hang on one second. Well, you had uh, third down conversions. Uh, Auburn was uh, 11 of 16. Ole Miss was 10 of 16. Uh, they had 462 total yards. Uh, passing was 238 for Auburn. They ran the ball for 224 yards. Ole Miss only threw for 161 yards today, but ran the ball for 283. Um, man, I, you know. It, it, well, I, let me ask you a quick – yeah, I was going to ask you a quick question regarding that game because uh, eight interceptions for Crowd the last two ball games. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about how he was the most improved quarterback going in to this year, yeah. probably with Link of his offense. Is it time for a quarterback change, not an offer? Uh, you know, and actually late in that game, John, they uh, they went to John Ross Plumley. Um, he only threw one for seven yards. But so I'm saying, uh, you think it's time for a change? I don't know. I, I, I really don't. I, I think with the Lane Kiffin offense, um, well, I, I, let me just say this. I don't think it's the offense that's the problem and in Oxford. The offense is not the problem. It's that defense. That defense is horrible, John. You could bring back – you could go get Monty Kiffin. You can go get Lane's Pops, and he ain't going to fix it in Oxford, man. I'm telling you. That defense is terrible. I mean, I saw multiple times today quarterback just roll out for Auburn Bo Nix, and he just chunks it. I mean, it's just a – oh, screw it. I'm going to throw it up and see. Numerous times. And then Ole Miss would have three guys right there, and here comes the Auburn guy. He just comes by and catches it and gets tackled. I mean, it's just – that defense is just inept right now. They're, they've got gaping holes. Uh, they're just bad, John. They're just bad. I, I don't know any, way, any other way to put it besides they're just bad. Uh, John, 30 seconds to go. Uh, Indiana on the goal line. Quarterback sneak. Six points. Touchdown. They haven't said it yet, but it's a touchdown. <clears throat> Hold on. Okay, you're talking – why are you talking about the Indiana – I'm going to look at the Indiana game. I'm going to talk to you about this game real quick. Um FSU Louisville forty eight to sixteen. Come on, man! I uh, after that I after you know. after you played so well. Who was it that played? So, God, who? Who Florida State? Oh. They beat North Carolina last week. That's right. Yeah, after beating North Carolina last week, the way you did, yeah. and you come out flat, thirty one to fourteen at half against Louisville. Yeah, and Louisville was one and four going in. Come on. Uh, man, I, you know, um, I I want to see Norvell do well. Uh, I like Mike Norvell, um, but it's going to take some time. It, it's not going to happen overnight. But you, man, you can't come out flat like that after a big, big win. And I mean, I mean honestly, John, I mean, I mean, let's let's be honest. I think Memphis kind of came out flat. A little that's bit. what I was about to say. I think Memphis came out flat because they beat UCF last week the way they yeah. did. Yeah, looking back at it and everything like that, and then looking into next week just a tad bit going into Cincinnati next week. As yeah, well. I mean, uh, you know, of course, every coach is going to tell you this is the only game we're worried about. It's the game in front of us, and we're not looking forward, looking ahead. And uh, everybody does it. It's it's it's, it's human nature. Um, but I think when we're talking about Florida State, man, uh, Norvell is going to take a, a, a few years. Um, I think by year three. Year four, you'll see the turnaround if they give him that enough time. Uh, 
talking about another coach that has a lot of expectations and has not lived up to them, and that's Tom Herman in Texas. Uh, of course, Texas. Well, being, hey, beating Baylor right now the way they are, they are. So, I mean, yeah, they got the win today against Baylor, but uh, Tom Herman should be a lot better than he is, John. Uh, I mean, it's his fourth year at Texas. I see if it's year two and you haven't quite got it there. But by year four, you should have your guys in there to run your system. But, man, it's I, I think Tom Herman will be fired before the end of the year. I honestly believe that. I think Tom Herman will. I think um, – uh, what's his face? Gus uh, – yeah, Gussie Boy will be gone with Chad Morris. Uh, both of them will be gone. Chad will be back in Texas watching high school football. But um, – And gonna Gus be, will be the offensive coordinator at Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, and Gus will be at, like, Arkansas State again or something. Uh, who knows? Um, another thing, if – Auburn fires Gus Malzahn. I think they pick up the phone and call one Mr. Hugh Freeze. Yeah. I think they do. I, I think they I pick still up the think, phone and call Hugh. I still think maybe Hugh Freeze still was – I don't know. He's happy at Liberty, according to him. He is. He is – yeah, he is happy at Liberty. And he's doing a good job at Liberty. That's I still – like – I listened to him and Greg and Eli on the radio this week, and now, yeah. why would you want to go? Like, why would you want to go to Auburn and handle that pressure right off the bat? I agree, and that's and that's that's the thing. I mean, go back and look at look at Bowden was there, Tuberville was there, and it was the same thing every year. Okay, you win five, six, seven games. Yeah, you're not on the hot seat. Okay, or you can win four games and beat Alabama, and you're not on the hot seat. But if you win nine games, ten games, and then lose to Alabama, oh, you're on the hot seat. It, it, there's too much unwarranted, in my opinion, unwarranted expectation out of Auburn. Because they're or not, lose, right. Or if you're losing a bowl game, like an Outback Bowl, to like a Big Ten team. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. Missouri game just went final. Missouri ended up winning 20 to 10. But Kentucky's offense was a no show today. Eight first downs. Missouri had 26. Wow. Missouri was 10 to 20 on third downs. Kentucky was two of nine. Um, Missouri had 220 rushing yards. Kentucky, 90, they missed their running back all right. 95 rushing yards, 50 passing yards for the game. 5 0. Time of possession, 43 minutes for Missouri to 16 minutes for Kentucky. That's horrible. Uh, just to give you an update, John, 22 seconds to go in Indiana, and we've got ourselves a close ball game, 28-26. Indiana is getting ready to line up for the two-point conversion for the tie. I'll give you play-by-play, play, don't worry. Okay. And uh, I meant to tell you also this in the preview also for that. I was going to talk about that. Go. Shotgun bit, formation, uh, uh, three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Or, I'm sorry, three to the right, one to the left. Motion wide receiver out to the right, makes a diamond formation to the right. Uh, here's the snap. Rush, quarterback draw, gets outside. Two-point conversion is good. Indiana has tied Penn State. 28-28 with 22 seconds to go. Uh, this was almost my lock of the week, John, but I took Maryland, whose game starts here just shortly. Uh, I took Maryland over Northwestern today. Uh, I just don't think Northwestern's that good. I am really excited to see what Lockley can do in Maryland, man. I think uh, I think he, he, he may get them going back. But this is a very interesting football game. Uh, of course, as Memphis fans, we know a lot about Penn State. We faced them in the Cotton Bowl. But – uh, Mika Parsons out at linebacker for them. Journey Brown out at wide receiver for them. Uh, definitely not the Penn, same Penn State team that we saw last year. No, it's just that the the only thing they got, in my opinion, is James Franklin and the head coach. Still. Yeah. I, I mean, I do like Franklin. I always have liked Franklin. Uh, John, we are now. There's, in a, the hey, there's, there's a there's a fun, there's a funny story behind that. What's that? 
the we're now in the second overtime. Middle Tennessee and Rice is still tied at thirty four. Man, I hope Tommy West and Britt and Coach Docs still get that win because there's been a lot of people their defense and everything this year has gave up so many yards mm-hmm. and so many points and I just hope they can pull it out somehow in that win. But uh, I want to tell you a story about James Franklin real quick. Mm-hmm. When Cincinnati played at Vanderbilt in the uh, Liberty Bowl, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, I was going for Cincinnati as the conference at first because it was yeah. a conference USA yeah. back then. But uh, I saw – but you remember, but Jones was the head coach at Cincinnati during that time. Right. Yes, yes, yes. But anyways, uh, one of my best friends basically had a baseball hitting contest at the AutoZone Park mm-hmm. between the two teams going on. But anyways, I had a – I told Bud Jones I was really going for – I asked him if I could take a picture with him. Mm-hmm. And at first he kind of hesitated, you know, like he didn't want me to take a photo with him. Right. But his wife <laughs> his wife uh, ended up told him, go ahead to take a picture of him. He's wearing the Memphis jacket. <laughs> And it represent the conference and everything like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know where I'm going, don't you? Yeah. But uh, he didn't notice, but I had a very belt T-shirt right under it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because I liked Jay Franklin at the time as the head coach at Vanderbilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, plus I was like, you know, I was representing the state of Tennessee in a way too because some of these high school kids I've seen over the years actually played at Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I'm like, so I zip my. Oh, what are you doing, in Indiana? Sorry, John. Indiana <laughs> just kicked a little squibber. So Penn State's got the ball at the fifty. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, first down, Penn State. Well, not quite first down, Penn State. Uh, they are now at the about forty yard line. Uh, no, they got one timeout left. Eleven seconds to go. Man, this has been a heck of a football game. Um, what's Tim Allen? What's Coach Tim Allen doing over in here? Come on now, Kick yeah, it I, don't deep. Know. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Kick it deep, uh, John. Looking at the games tonight, uh, the games that'll be going on starting here just just shortly. Uh, of course, the big game: uh, row the boat, row the boat, row the boat. Uh, Michigan and Minnesota tonight. I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, of course, my lock of the week, uh, and that is Maryland. Hey, let's give our picks real quick. Let's go. Come on. All right. Michigan, uh, Minnesota, John. Who you got, man? Michigan, Harbaugh. Let's go. Taking Minnesota, baby. Uh, <laughs> Hawaii and Fresno State. What you looking like? You know, Hawaii, first game of the WAC. For, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first game of the Mountain West, I mean, going into yep. this year. But uh, I'm thinking of the WAC from the old days. Gosh. Uh, but anyways, Hawaii's going on the road, two different time zones. They could pull it out, but they're gonna throw the yep. ball probably like sixty-five times this game. That's not. But they do have a hey. They do have a new head coach as well this year. Mm-hmm. So I take Hawaii. Hawaii. I am too. I'm gonna take Hawaii as well. Uh, Maryland Northwestern. Everybody knows who I'm taking. Northwestern's a twelve-point favorite in this game. By the way, I'm taking the dog. Give me the Terps. Your lock of the year. My lock <laughs> of the week. No, just the week, not the year. <laughs> but we are gonna have. Our lock of the year guest, hopefully tomorrow sometime. But uh, hopefully tomorrow, yeah. But uh, that was just classic last week. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, Northwestern favored by twelve. We're still on yeah. point spread, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For our overall record, me and you are still on point spread. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. I mean, Northwestern coach is still there, so it's I'm Gerald, hoping been there for a while. Yeah. Are you surprised that he still has a job? No, I I don't think he's done a bad job. Oh, hold on, John. Eight seconds left. It's a 57-yard field goal for Penn State. No way. And we got ourselves a little icing situation. He's just putting <laughs> a little icing on top. That's all he's doing. Yeah, Pat, back to yeah. Northwestern. I think Pat Fitzgerald's done a good job there. Um, I don't know how much longer he's got there, if that makes any sense. Right. So, I guess I'll take Northwestern at home. Okay. Got to take Northwestern. Uh Got the Virginia Cavaliers heading down to South Beach to take on the number 11 Miami Hurricanes. Give me the U, John. Yeah, Miami. Let's go. All right. Uh, got La Tech heading to Texas San Antonio to take on the Roadrunners tonight. Give me the Roadrunners in this one, John. Louisiana Tech's a two-and-a-half point favorite. Give me the Roadrunners at home. Ain't no one the game? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'll take La Tech. Coach Holtz. One of the best coaches out there. Uh, 
Up next, we've got number nine. Oh, hold on, John. Let me give you a play-by-play of this kick. <laughs> Eight seconds to go. This is a 30. <laughs> this is a third in inches. Uh, 57 yard field goal. Uh, here we go. Uh, snap is snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is no good. Missed it. No good for Penn State. 28 to 28. Three seconds to go in the game. Indy wait a minute, hang on. Hang, oh, wait a minute, hang on. How much time was left? Hang on, say what? There was eight seconds to go in the game when he kicked it, and he missed that field goal by, oh, my God. I mean, by, like, a foot. I mean, All right, quick, quick, hang on a second. This much. Hang on one second real quick. Eight seconds to go, third in the inches, right? Yeah, third in the inches, eight seconds to go. Uh, Penn State don't have one timeout left. Both teams don't have one timeout left. Um. But I, Indiana burned their last to ice the kicker. Penn State had one timeout, right? Uh, yes. Uh, do one more play. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, you know, who knows? All right, so just take a knee. You're on the road. We got so now we've lose. got our second overtime game going on tonight right now. All right, John, back to, the, back to tonight's football slate. Uh, the big game in the American Athletic – Second big game in the American Athletic Conference tonight. Uh, number nine, Cincinnati, traveling down to Texas to take on the SMU Mustangs. Uh, SMU is a one-and-a-half-point game. It's a pick em. Uh Who you got, wow. John? I'm going to take, take Cincinnati in this game. So the line did change. Wow. Yeah. Because Cincinnati was pretty much a two-and-a-half-point favorite all week. All week, yeah. But um, Cincinnati. All right. Uh, it's a toss up, but yeah, Cincinnati. Late night, late night, late night. Texas State heading out to BYU to take on the Fighting Mormons of the Brigham Young University, number twelve Brigham Young University. BYU is a thirty-point favorite in this game. Uh, give me BYU and the Mormon Manzel, Zach Zach Taylor. I take McBride and Texas State to cover. Really. Well, look at Syracuse and Clemson line today. That's a lot of points. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, CBS Sports tonight, John, 9.30 our time. Uh, UNLV traveling out to San Diego State to take on the San Diego State Aztecs. It's going to be a pretty good game. First game of the year for both of those teams. Uh, give me San Diego State. You know, Mountain West at the dark. Not no yeah, Pac-12 at the dark yet. But, uh, uh, yeah, give me the Aztecs. All right, and uh, the latest night of the game of the night, uh, Air Force going to San Jose State to take on – what are they? The San Jose State uh, – Spartans. Is that? Spartans, is that what they are? Yeah, Spartans. Air Force is 1-0 and in the year. Uh, John, who you got in this one, man? Falcons, Air Force. Air Force. Yeah, I'll take Air Force as well. I'll take Air Force as well. All right. Well, Milton's, and Milton's, he just took the lead 40 to 34 in their double overtime. That's what I was just getting ready to ask about if, if we had a score update on that game. Um, I was going to ask you about the overtime. You just got the victory 40 to 34, by the way. So basically, good win for Coach West and Sonic Bell. But, um, very, 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 very good win for them. Uh, John, do you want to go ahead and let the folks know what we got going on tomorrow on the show? Well, real quick, we're going to talk before we talk about tomorrow. Let's do some NFL talk real quick. But uh, real oh, quick, yeah. uh, real quick about overtime. What did you? I mean, we haven't seen this yet, but the five overtime rule that they came in effect last year with the two point conversion tries. Do you like it, or do you want to keep on like the Ole Miss versus Arkansas game from years ago with Matt Jones was that quarterback the seven no. overtime? I like the um, I like the way that they're going to do it now. Where they, where they just go back and forth. Uh, I think I don't. you do. Do you not? I like the overtime as, as it was. I like the shootouts. Yeah, but I mean, do you? I mean, do you really, really, really want to sit there and watch a football game for nine hours? I mean, if it's good, yeah, I get it. I mean, I understand. <laughs> like, I mean, but I mean, look, hey, think about it. LSU, if you go back, LSU if you go back to those. Man. To those Ole Miss, that, that damn Ole Miss-Arkansas seven overtime game, that is a great football game. And who was the other one? Was it Ole Miss or Arkansas and Kentucky? Am I right on that? Was it Kentucky? 
I really don't remember, but LSU takes A and M from last year. Yeah, that was a great game too. That was a great. Speaking of LSU, South Carolina just busted them big time. Gassed them with a big run. Touchdown, South Carolina to take the lead on LSU. Uh, Coach O is uh, having some having some issues, man. Two so players optioned out. Bo Pelini's pissed on the sidelines. Um, Cordell Beckham needs more money for him. Of course, <laughs> I think the big, the biggest game in the on the NFL slate this week is obviously. Did you hear, hey, did you hear what I said about OBJ? Oh, he shouldn't have been on the field giving out cash. That's his own <laughs> stupid fault. I don't. I have, I have no pity for Odell Beckham Jr. If you're stupid enough to get on the field and hand out cash in front of cameras, you deserve to be banned, you moron. Um, <laughs> biggest game of the week, obviously, is Pittsburgh Steelers traveling up to Nashville to take on those Tennessee Titans. Uh, both 5-0 and on CBS tomorrow. I really hope I get this game. I don't know if I will or not yet, but I'm really hoping I do. Uh, got some pretty good games this week. Uh, got the Lions and Falcons, John. Who are you going to take in that one? Well, the the, Lions, the the, are, are, we saving, are we saving the uh, Titans game for last? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm oh, taking yeah. the Lions because I take anybody over the Falcons because they're terrible. Matt Stafford and company, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Browns, Bengals. Who you got? Browns. Okay. A uh, couple of th- uh, three and three team heading down to New Orleans to take on the Saints, Panthers. Uh, Panthers, Saints. Who you got, John? I don't know if you know this or not, but Drew Brees is missing a lot of offensive power this week. Yes. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders missing with COVID, and Michael Thomas is battling an injury, I think, as well. But uh, I take New Orleans at home. Mm-hmm. Carolina misses their um, Christian McCaffrey running back. All right, I would take uh, – give me the Panthers. I'll take the Panthers. Uh, up next, we got the Buffalo Bills traveling to the worst team in the NFL maybe ever. Uh, I think they're sucking for Trevor, and I think it's a terrible idea because uh, I don't think Trevor Lawrence wants to go there. Uh, and that's the New York Giants. Um Oh, and six, New York yes. Giants. Matt, G- Matt Gase is a yes. just yes. gas, whatever his name is. He needs to be fired. The guy's horrible. I'm taking the Bills. Wes is the Jets. The Jets? <laughs> you're, you're taking the Jets? Yeah, the Bills will play the – no, I said the Bills are playing the Jets. That's, That's what I said. Oh, sorry, Jets, my bad. I'm taking the no, you said the Giants. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, I'm taking the Bills. No. <laughs> They're both <laughs> awful, but yeah. Yeah, they are, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely the Bills. All right, up next, we got those uh, Dallas Cowgirls traveling to Washington, Washington to take on the Washington uh, <laughs> football team um, of 1912, 32, or whatever year. Uh, football. Yeah, go football team. Um, give, me, <laughs> give me Washington. Dallas sucks. Until they use Tony Pollard more, I'm going with Washington. <laughs> yeah. All right, up next, we've got the uh, one and five Texans taking on the four and one Green Bay Packers on Fox tomorrow, noon start. Uh, give me the Packers in this one. <coughs> yeah, Packers should win this one, although they struggled last week on offense against Tampa Bay. But yeah. They did. They did. I agree. Uh, up next, we've got the Buccaneers. Newly, uh, Antonio Brown's now the Buccaneers, by the way, too. Antonio Brown taking on the – or Buccaneers taking on the Raiders. The Raiders. Tomorrow it's phone Fox. Uh, give me the Buccaneers, John. I'm going to take – for as our friend Arlington Connor Ferguson would say, the Raiders. Let's go. Right, he's going <laughs> to take the Raiders. Uh, up next we got the 5-1 and one Chiefs, Chiefs, Chiefs. Taking on the two and three Denver Broncos. Uh, give me the Chiefs. Upset, upset, upset. You going to take the Broncos? Yeah, I'll take the Broncos at home, although I am kind of concerned about the offense for Denver uh, because yeah. it's Denver's offense other than Drew Locke. That's all they really got going right now. And I guess some right. key players still on offense. Yeah. But they're not oh, as wow. the Denver offense when they had Emmanuel Sanders as, all, as of old. And yeah. the Kansas City defense is still shaky. That's one reason 
I'm, plus they're on a short week as well. Very, very short So I'm definitely week. picking Denver at home in the upset. Don't take Denver. All right, up next we got the 49ers heading up to New England to take on the New England Patriots. Uh, give me those 49ers, John. I'll take Cam Newton. San Francisco has done so many long road trips throughout the year already. I'm taking Cam Newton at home. All right, up next, John, we got the one and five Jacksonville Jaguars heading to the one and five. uh, Where are they from? Los Angeles Raiders? Is that where they're from? Aren't they the L.A. Raiders? L.A. Chargers. Chargers, sorry, Chargers. Yeah, (laughs) They're they're, they're in Los Angeles, right? They're not yeah, in, LA, yeah. Raiders in Vegas. Okay. I, everybody's moving around. I can't figure it out. Uh, give me the Chargers, John. You know, I take Justin Herbert and the Chargers, but they got to basically finish the game and win a game. Yeah, I they know. They cannot blow leads. Come yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Up next, John, we got the Sunday night game, which I think is going to be a great football game. I got my boy Kyler Murray going in fantasy football. For the Cardinals, you got the Seahawks taking on the Cardinals. It's the Battle of the Birds. Uh, give me the Cardinals in this one, John. I expect the Cardinals to beat the Seattle Seahawks and Pete Carroll. Well, there'd be defense played in that game. Probably not. Probably not, but I think I think that Kyler's a little more uh, – well, has a little more firepower around him than um, – touchdown, Indiana. Touchdown, Indiana. Get ready to go for the extra point to tie the game up in overtime. Go ahead, John. Uh, I take Seattle, Russell Wilson. My MVP. You take Seattle? MVP. I take Seattle because I think right now your MVP in the league right now is Russell Wilson. Could be. Yeah, I, I think he's definitely earned that. Uh, this week, John, Monday Night Football, the Bears taking on the Rams. Who you got? Man, I tell you what, it's fun to watch these two. I mean, it's fun to see Mevis, former Mevis players competing against each other on both sides of the ball on in this game and yeah. that Washington and Dallas game. Yep. A lot of jersey swaps are going to be going well, on. Well, no, weekend. no, no more jersey swaps, John. They don't do oh, that. Oh yeah, no, what a bummer! They, do they just they send, need to. They just send each other a picture of the jersey and say, "Hey, here's your picture" or something. I, I don't. Or know. they'll just FedEx it without us. Oh, right? Something, yeah, they do something. You know, you're exactly right, man. I, I I love watching former Tigers going against each other in a primetime game. That's even more fun to watch. You know, I guess I'll take the Bears. You know, until I mean, that Rams defense is is was a disappointment last week against the 49ers. Yeah. Their offense was a no show, also. Yeah. But uh, I take the Bears on the road. Jason Smith, Chicago Bears, going into yeah. L.A. and pulling it off. Oh, John, we're going for – Indiana's going for a two-point conversion for the win live. See, Hang on. John, not only do we bring the college football fans a great show about college football, but dadgummit, we bring them live updates. I mean, you know, I, I, you know this thing is really becoming a lot of fun. Uh, Which up was the next, game on again? Hang uh, on. Uh, it is on Fox Sports 1, John. Fox All right, I'm watching Sports it now, 1. too. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, here we go. For the two-point conversion for the win. Now, I might have a little delay because I have YouTube TV and you don't. Don't ruin it. Um, John, would you like to see Indiana get this win? Oh, my God. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. Oh, something happened, and I haven't seen it yet. Oh, dang it, I just told you not to ruin it for me, and you freaking do. There's no way he got in. No. All right, fans, you're going to get John's reaction, and I'm just now seeing the play. So you're not, So now you're going to get my raw emotion reaction. <laughs> oh, he's in. <laughs> what? Yes. No, no, that's a that's a fumble. That's a fumble. Are they reviewing it, John? I, I right now they're just running hang off. On. The field. I like, hang on, babe. John saw this before I did, so I didn't even know. 
There's no way. Oh, he's no. down. He's no. down. No. Uh -uh. He's down. No, he's down. There's no way. Fans, you get raw. You get real uncut with me and John. <laughs> I don't know, John. That ball touched the pile on. Oh, uh, hold him. on. I call you short. <sighs> oh, man, I don't know. God, that's close. Um, But, yeah, fans, uh, you know, it's going to be another – it's, it's been another great week in college football. Tigers with a big, big, big – Hang on. They get the, the – oh, the, the, hold on. The, hang on. Fans, John's going to ruin it for me. I'm going to know what happens before <laughs> it happens. <laughs> that's the purpose of it. I got to get ahead. <laughs> I have to be ahead. Uh, That's why you get regular cable. Let's. <laughs> no, that ball's out of bounds. It, 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 it's, yeah. it's not going to stand. They're going to end up losing. That ball's out of bounds. I am not I'm, a big I'm, fan of them going for two, though. I am not. You're at home for crying out loud. You're at home. Take the points and keep playing. I agree. I agree. The, the only time I would go for two in that situation if I was on the road uh, to just get the win. It's the first out. game of the season for crying out loud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Fans, we are up over 200 likes, 200 follows on the Facebook page. We really appreciate it a lot. Uh, John, I know I speak for myself and John as well. Man, this show is a hell of a lot of fun to put on for y'all every week. Uh, John and I literally work full-time jobs and do we're this. And it's, it's, <laughs> we're not done yet, no. It's, it's getting bigger. Uh, this weekend's going to be a lot bigger. Uh, get ready. Not going to ruin any surprises or anything, even though I really want to. Um, but hey, uh, gonna uh, we're going to tell we're going to tell the fans what happens during this Indiana game. So you know. All right. So uh, they, uh, no, no, they did give the give Indiana the win. So that may be a key factor in this review um, because the call on the field is a touchdown. So the indisputable evidence. Hang on, is it the AAC refs or the SEC refs? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. No, that ball's down. He's down. The, the ball's out of bounds. No, he's, <clears throat> he's short. Is that what they called it? No, I'm just talking about, like, you know, I'm just talking about like looking at the replay over and over and over again. Yeah, he's. He, he, I, I think he's short by about a quarter of a yard. This has been a Speaking great of which. Go ahead. <laughs> John can't say anything. They just announced him. John's like, oh, shit. Oh. oh, that's too funny. Come on and announce it so we know. So we can let our. I already know what happens. But I'm not I know something. you already know, John. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> They're just showing the same replay 50 times. He's in. I'm telling you, he's in. He's in. Touchdown Indiana <laughs> ball game. Knocks off the Penn State Nittany Lions. Fans, like I was saying, we've got over 200 views or 200 likes on the Facebook page. We've now got the YouTube channel as well. Uh, Not we enough evidence to return the field. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for all the work hey, for the I, show. You know I mean? I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell some of the fans some of it for tomorrow, then we can go there. Okay. We can... Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So, face, first of all, we do have a special interview set up at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. But we'll probably would not announce that until, let's say, maybe. We'll say tomorrow morning sometime. No, we'll do that after I get off work. But uh... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll probably do it around. Five o'clock, five thirty tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Just because we gotta make sure he is still good to have that, right, you know, right, show right. time slot. Yeah. But uh, fans will like it. I know, I mean, you'll love it because we yeah. know him. Yeah. But uh, the three thirty slot, as of right now, is still at uh, former defense analyst coach at who is now at the Rascal Westland mm -hmm. D three school wide receiver coach Josh McElroy. We join us at 3:30. Terry Davis from the Tri-State Defender will be joining us around 4:30 or 4:15-ish, somewhere around there. Um, five o'clock. I am going to have some a kids that I usually cover in high school football in the years past named Robert Giamo, Walt Tucker, uh, just to name a few. And uh, there's also a player that came from White Station. 
Jer- uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, who we're going to get on as well. But I do also want to give him a shout out because of what's going on with him this year, with ch- going from White Station to Barlow is why one reason I do want to get him on because he couldn't he he had a chance to not even play football this year with Shelby County Schools as well. Right. Yeah. And um, just to name a few players from Barlow, the reason I want to get these guys on is because last year was the first winning season Barlett had in so many years, over six wins in general. And they also are playing for a region championship next Friday night against the Carville Dragons. Yeah. And uh, that's one reason I do want to get them on as well. And just talk about how they're reacting with, you know, this abbreviated season with COVID, how their scheduling has changed dramatically because they added Christian Rhodes on the schedule this year. They added SBA on the schedule. Mm -hmm. They added so many good teams in general, and they got some good wins off of them. Uh, so that's five o'clock slot. Posey will will rejoin us since he, he had a, something pop up tonight around. What do you say, six o'clock probably? Yeah, probably probably somewhere around there with uh, with uh, Posey tomorrow. Yeah, so Posey will be joining us around six o'clock with our luck of the year guest Brandon Bumgarner around six o'clock possibly. No. So we can talk about that crazy UCF game again from last week a little bit, and get ahead with Cincinnati in general with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then to wrap it up that night after our dinner break, like I said, our special guest at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Fans will love him. Me and you will love him. I'm sure oh, yeah. fans in general will remember the name pretty well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not to spoil anything. But, uh, yeah, just looking forward to that announcement. If something changes throughout the day tomorrow while I'm at work, I'm sure Wes will probably keep you updated on Facebook. Yeah. Facebook. Uh, YouTube, you name it, he'll keep you updated. Or I can keep you updated also when I get off work around 1 o'clock, 1.30 tomorrow afternoon. Um, yeah, like I said, fans, thank you for all your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing the videos, just being there and watching it. I know we bring you laughs and cries <laughs> and all that <laughs> because of our, you know, Weirdness. Are <laughs> yelling at the TVs and whatnot. <laughs> but uh, thanks for everything, Wes. You know, it's been a Not fun a so far. Um, I look forward to many more with you, and hopefully we can just show more growing by the day. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, like I said, uh, this video will be posted to Facebook uh, probably here shortly. Uh, that way we can get this information out to y'all. And thank y'all again. Uh, tomorrow, full slate with uh, college football pick them with Wes and John, and thank you very much for watching again.